Hello Akron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match. It's going to be on Tomb of Heroes between Kron Aberrant and Kitan. Kron Aberrant is in the west side of the map playing Grekum, while Kitan is in the east side of the map, and he is also playing Grekum. So Grekum versus Grekum, and this is with Assassin Mode, the new mode that came out in version 1.4. So let's go over it a bit. We have an Akron for each side, and for Grekum it's Guardian. All the Akrons are taken from the campaign, by the way. So, Grekum's side has Guardian, while Vecker and Ciso have other characters, which will come up when they come up, because there'll be quite a few Assassin Mode games we're going over today. And Kronheimer just getting his economy going very quickly, while Kaiden is also setting himself up, getting his... using his Akron to scout, actually. This is a strategy that's apparently come a fair bit, using the, the Akron as an early game scout and then echoing it out before it gets killed permanently. Though, in the early game, usually your opponent won't have enough offensive power to actually destroy your Akron and really mess with those plans. But even if they do, you can echo it out for a while. So it's not really a risky strategy. And the Octo's here coming up for Kitan, so he's getting his economy set up. And Kron Aberrant is doing the same. And once... Um, Kron Aberrant seems to be taking a while to actually get himself everything right. So I'll focus on Kitan for now, since he's actually doing stuff. And Kitan getting... Is he getting another Octo or... What is he getting? He's a little bit surprised he isn't getting an early Q Plasma RP in order to get an early Octopod. And Kron Aberrant is finally doing stuff. He is getting his economy set up. He is getting his Faro and Seppi in progen mode, and then working from there. So, let's see, Kaiden has all the stuff going back. And where is? Here we go. So, yeah, this is what I mean. The Akron here can get heavily damaged. If the Akron is destroyed, the player cannot come in any point in time where the Akron existed. So, Kaiden likely to echo out that Akron movement because he doesn't want to lose. Yeah, he's keeping the Akron in his base, not moving it out to scout anymore. Kron Aberrant, on the other hand, is in fact moving his Akron out to scout, so we will be able to see what's going on, and both players are pretty even economically as well, although it looks like Kaiden... No, Kaiden's actually slightly behind. Kaiden does not have... Well, he's not going for a Q Plasma RP, so Kaiden will get ahead further, quicker, but Kron Aberrant can get an earlier Octopod, which might not actually help at this point. He's not really going for... And neither player is going for a rush that much, and Grekum versus Grekum. Early Octopods are kind of meant to fight off early Octopods, so Kaiden might have a small problem, but given the size of this map, I doubt it's going to be that big of a deal. And once again, Kron Aberrant's Akron getting attacked while scouting, and once again, it won't really make a big difference. Kaiden isn't going to be able to do too much to it permanently. Kron Aberrant's just going to echo it out, and that'll be that. Although it looks like Kron Aberrant is letting it go for a bit longer than you might need to. And yeah, actually, Kitan has ultimately destroyed it in the future, but that's not a huge concern. Kron Aberrant will be echoing that out, and then we'll just... I almost see he was further back, although it looks like he's trying to echo it out as close to the Unplayable Pass as possible. And once he does that, then we will see the game begin in earnest. So let's see, these two guys here, Faro, Progen... Neither player really building up more RP. Okay, Kitan building up one more RP, but neither player building up anything other than RPs. The size of this map means that economic play is really the best thing to go for early on. Very quick aggressive play doesn't usually get rewarded. And as we can see, Kron Aberrant's actually moved his Q Plasma RP as well to Liquid Crystal. He can build an Octobot. He does have 48 Q Plasma in order to do that. Well, 44 is what he needs. So he has enough to do that, but he's not likely to. And Kitan appears... Is he sending out his Akron to Scout again? I think he is. Yeah, Kaiden's setting his Akron to scout once again, see what Kron Aberrant is up to now. And neither player has really developed all that much. Kron Aberrant inside of Kaiden's base as well. It looks like Kron Aberrant back here. No, he hasn't echoed out his scout. Both players just have their Akron tucked into their opponent's base, not doing anything with it, really. No, Kron Aberrant still isn't echoing it out. I'm not sure if he's waiting for the Kron Energy to do that, but I do not see him doing that. This actually might be... This is really risky. I think he might end up losing that Akron because of that. I, I, I mean, that is priority one, really. That's that's the most important target in the game. If you lose that, that's that's a big deal. So I don't know how he's planning on dealing with that, but it's kind of risky, really. Let's see what else is there. Kron has that Octo going down, and... No, we saw this already with the Akrons going past each other, so neither player, like I said, neither player is intending to echo out anything. 
And as we can see, both players have lost their Akrons in the future, so I don't really see how this is going to help out much for either one. By the present, both players have lost their Akrons. It, like, or, yeah, both players have lost them. And that is... That's a bit of a blow, really. Yeah, Crown Aberrant is apparently losing his Akron very soon, because there's an Octopod coming up, so Kitan gets his Octopod first, and Crown Aberrant doesn't have an Octopod yet, at, this is at the same time, by the way, the 247 mark. Crown Aberrant getting an Octopod as well, the 250 mark. So, that is going to be the end of the Akron scouting game, although, I don't think Kitan's, or Crown Aberrant isn't, no, Kitan, Kitan's not aware of it, Kitan is still moving forward, he... Okay, now there he's echoing it out. So he's he does not want to move that forward. So the Octopods building up, the Acrons coming back to their base, and the Octopods now moving out to try to see. I guess they're trying to kill the Acron in its own home territory if they have the chance. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So Cron Avern is yeah getting his Acron out of the way. Both players are pretty safe. He has Octopod as well to protect his main base. So Kitan can't patrol. So Kitan's going for an offensive. Crown Aberrant is setting his Octopod up for defense, and Crown Aberrant will be able to win any engagements, especially if he builds up a Reef, which he is right now. So that will basically end this part of the, this stage of the game, where the Acrons are foolishly going out, scouting, trying to figure out what's going on. And... Like I said, Kitan appears to be trying to either intercept the Acron or just kill it in its own base, but I doubt that's going to happen, because it's coming back, but it's... Like I said, protected by this oct these Octos and this Octopod. Or, not these Octos. These Octos aren't doing anything for that. But it is protected by this Octopod, at the very least. And with the Reef as well, that Octopod is just going to win any engagements. So, Crown Aberrant very quickly building up his economy. Kitan not building up his economy as quickly. Kitan further in the future, but focused more on Reefs, getting tech up, and then from there building up his economy. But both players look about even at this point. I think Crown Aberrant may be slightly ahead for economy. I see four on each. Well, Kitan has, at least further in the future, yeah, Crown Aberrant is ahead on the economy. He's got two more RPs compared to Kitan, and otherwise, not much different, but he does have a lot of QP RPs coming in, whereas Kitan is focusing more on Liquid Crystal. So he will be able to, Kitan will be able to build up resource processors fairly quickly with the Liquid Crystal focus, but Crown Aberrant is very obviously going to be going for air, going to be going for Pharopods. I mean, with the amount of Q Plasma he has, that's easily Pharopods since they're pretty much even for Liquid Crystal and Q-Plasma. Kitan, on the other hand, given the resource distribution, if he is going for air units, he's probably going to be going more for Sepipods. He might try Pharopods, but his resource distribution would be better for mass Sepipod production. Because Sepipods are about... They're one... Well, they're about twice as much LC to QP that you need. Which means that... Well, given... Let's see what he has here. He has six LC RPs. He's going to quickly get three QP RPs, which means... That's exactly the ratio he needs for Sepipods. And no, it looks like Crown Aberrant is moving back. He's stockpiled a bunch of Q Plasma, but now moving back into more of a Sepipod friendly ratio. So we'll see what he's up to, actually, because he's getting a Spire up right now. Once he does that, we'll find out what he's going for. No, getting another Crystal RP. So it looks like both players are going to be very quickly even on resources, even though Crown Aberrant is still slightly ahead. They're pretty close to even. Kitan has a Faro ready just to deal with this. He has another one already in progen mode. So we have his Faro ready to deal with this will be dealing with it very quickly. Getting the Spire and everything, I mean. And the other Faro is... Where is that Faro? That Faro's over here. And yeah, Spire being built up. That will be... Well, that'll be enough to get Faropod. So he is going for at least one Faropod. Cryon is getting one Faropod. Kitan, on the other hand, not got a Spire yet. He's going for... No, he does have a Spire, never mind. He's going for a Sepipod, so I was exactly right. So we're seeing Sepipod versus Faropod, and basically it'll be a question of whether Cron Aberrant puts his Faropod's neck on the line, because Faropod's... Oh, yeah, here are mass Faropod's coming up. Well, two, but for Akron... From, by Akron standards, that's mass. Anyway, Faropod's coming up. That will be pretty big, because the Faropod's are very powerful units. They are very powerful bomber units, while Sepipods are the interceptor units. So, from this, it looks like Kitan is likely to try to go for defending from Faropods. He's expecting Faropods to come in to try to take out his Akron, and he's going to try to defend that with the Sepipod here. But that Sepipod 
can only do so much because there's two Farpods here, and while it can detect cloaks and all that, there are still two Farpods and more Farpods on the way, so one Sepipod can only do so much. Two Sepipods, however, would be able to handle this just fine. But one Sepipod, I'm not sure if we'd be able to kill them both in time to stop the, the Akron from dying. And two more Oxys coming in, so Resource Processor's coming into the South Natural Expansion, and Sepipod already trying to scout out this expansion here to the south for Kron Abbott. Kron Abbott, of course, not caring about that at all, focusing entirely on his main base, focusing on getting these Farapods up, and then from there he's going to be able to very quickly get everything else that he needs for this. So Octo's coming up as well. Octo's, like I said, we saw this already for the RPs being built up. Sepipod's trying to find where, I guess, any bases might be. Very good idea. Kitan scouting out all the bases to make sure that Kron Abbott is not expanding out of control, but Kron Abbott doesn't care about that. He is going straight for harassment, getting his Farpods into the base here and dealing what damage he can, which is going to be quite a lot. Kitan jumping back here and putting up his Sepipods to defend, but even with that, I think the Sepipods are going to have a hard time. Farpods coming in and dealing some damage here, getting rid of... Well, getting rid of a lot here, actually. Getting rid of some of the resource processors and... This is pretty big. So both of the fire pods are going to be going down quickly, though. Enough sepi pods were built, so these fire pods don't last long. Cryonimate will need to move them away, get them into a different position, and he looks like he's able to do so. He has them connected to the Arcticus and dispatching them back home, so he's not going to be losing them. Because that's the one thing about fire pods is that you have to make sure that you're attacking in a position where your opponent cannot actually defend. Which pretty much means hitting near the unplayable past, because with air units... Air units can be moved so easily that while you need to, you can dodge away from it, from damage that your fire pods or that your air units have taken. Assuming you can, but it looks like Kron Aberrant doesn't actually have the Chrono Gene, won't it's in the unplayable past. He's lost those fire pods. The fire pods dealing with damage they think they can, but they aren't actually dealing any damage at all. Kitan having already killed them, so moving his semi pods into position. So Kron Aberrant now very threatened. He is. Sepipods coming at him, but no Farapods to defend, well, not really defend against them, but no Farapods to go for a revenge attack on the Akron and basically force Kitan into his base. Now, Kitan, of course, could make Farapods now. I'm a bit surprised he isn't, but I'm also surprised that why is he not going for the Assault? Why is he not at least scouting out Kron Amberin's main base, figuring out what he's up to? Kron Amberin getting gate, getting Chronoporting, and it looks like he's probably going to try to Chronoport back either Farapods or maybe something else. We'll see, but Farapods are a likely candidate. And moving Faros and Sepipods into attack. Sepipods, of course, will get there first by a long shot. And Titan getting in, attacking one of the reefs, but won't be able to do any real meaningful damage. These reefs are, well, this reef's being healed up by at least one other, if not two others. And Farpod coming in as well, so this Farpod will be taking a fair amount of damage if the Sepipods come in, but the Sepipods are. There, there they are in. We are back at the 1023 mark where Titan was focused and trying to get rid of this Farpod here, but the Octopods. Octopod not dealing that much damage. This Farpod might still go down before it's born, but it looks like the Sepipod's coming in. Sepi's coming in will tear apart the Sepipods, no problem. Kitan needs to retreat, and it looks like back at this point in time, he is not doing so. He is not sure he's aware of the Sepis that have come in to deal with the Sepipods, but he needs to get out of there. He needs to pull these guys back, otherwise he's going to lose that and lose the air advantage he had, because he does have a major air advantage. There we go. Pull it back, then take out the Farpod and the Farpods outside of the base. Just go back to protecting the Akron, really, because that's the that is the target that's going to be gone for. And Kron Abbott has his Chronoporting. Kitan getting Chronoporting. Kron Abbott has enough QP to Chronoport one unit, which is going to be this Farpod, likely. And see, this Farpod here is not Chronoporting yet. It should be soon, but it isn't yet. So once that happens, we'll see it probably dealing quite a bit of damage. Trying to uppercut this Akron, and if it does that successfully, which it probably won't, I think there are enough Sepi Paws there in time. I think there were enough Sepipods there in time for that not to be a big deal, but it's hard to say. I think that really it's going to come down to Kitan getting Chronoporting and being able to Chronoport back Sepipods in time to deal with the attack, but he has the Sepipods in the main base, so he it's around here when the main base is being attacked and the Farpaw is being attacked. If Kron Aberrant attacks, Chronoports back to that point in time and then attacks the Akron, he might have a chance, but it's a little bit tight. But here come more Farpods. Going back in here, and there we go. Chrono putting back to Farpod, actually, to attack this expansion here. So Kitan is going to be taking a fair amount of damage in the unplayable pass from that Farpod attack, but only to his economy. He still has a pretty strong economy in his main base. Chrono actually has about the same strength of economy in the main base, so 
While Kitan does have an advantage, he's going to lose shortly. Although, actually not, because he's going to be able to chromoport this stuff back. So he's going to be able to defend against this. And there's the Farpod, but the Farpod's still managing to take out... Why are these Sibipods not attacking? That's bizarre. Anyway, the Farpod's still managing to take out these resource processors here. And I don't know why the Sibipods were not attacking. That was bizarre. But anyway, the... Oh, no, I don't know why, because they can detect cloaked. So I don't... That was a very bizarre thing to have happened right then. And this Octopod here... Leading all of the rest of the forces into this base, so getting the Seppies in here as well to help defend. But three Octopods from Kitan will be more than enough. That will not last, so... I think Kitan has noticed that the Seppipods were not attacking the Faropod for some bizarre reason. And thus his exclamation. The... I really don't know what was going on there. That was bizarre. I... I guess I have to test that, because that... That was a really odd happenstance. I... I've never seen that happen before, with Sepipods just not suddenly attacking Farapods. Sepipods can always attack Farapods. They are cloak detectors, and of course they're anti-air units, so there's no reason why it wouldn't work. Excuse me. <coughs> Regardless, the Farapods are moving back out of the way, so... Or... Well, the Farapods have already been ordered to move out of the way. That was an uppercut, of course. So the orders were gone. Oh! So kind of pointing out that he might have done Chrono for Patrol, since Patrol is... When in order to one position, a hold position order. Except it doesn't make sense, because I'm pretty sure hold position does not mean hold fire. I'm quite certain that it isn't the same thing. So anyway, Chron Aver or Chiton, where's Chiton's Chronoport? Did Chiton... I think Chiton somehow permacloned these guys. Not sure, though. He might have just not Chronoported them back at all. But I think he may have accidentally permacloned the Cephipods. And where is anything else? More Sepipods coming in for Kitan. Crown Aberrant is building up his own ar air army, or had built up his own air army. Getting Sepipods to defend, and Crown putting a couple of them back as well, in order... Well, we'll see once we get to the... If we actually ever see the Crown Port arrival, which I don't think we will, but Crown putting back some of these Sepipods. While Kitan goes for a major offensive, massive assault coming in here from all his forces, and this is going to be... I don't think it's going to be the final showdown, though. I think this is going to be... There's going to be a few more battles afterwards. And here's a couple more Seppies coming in to help defend against these forces. And we'll be doing a very good job of it. Or... Actually, no. They're not doing enough of a good job. They're... They might be able to kill one Seppipod, maybe, but... No, they're getting torn apart. And Seppipods are getting cornerboard back from Kron Amrit, but not actually doing too much. Kitan in the Unplayable Pass, double-checking what's going on with those Seppipods. And, of course, they're fine. A bit surprised, though, because I guess they're not enough Seppies to actually deal with them. Still, they did take a lot of damage. They're almost dead, so any other forces coming in that come in later will kill them. But... And it looks like Crown Aberrant may have actually managed to mitigate this damage a bit. Still, we'll see you in the blue time. When the blue time of year comes along, then we'll find out what's actually happened. And here we go. So, jumping back here, the Seppipods appear to have actually been killed. Ultimately, don't have to either gone down or just been retreated, and I've not seen any in the main base. So yeah, they've they've gone down. These heavy pods coming in from Crown Aberrant, trying to fight off these octopods and not doing a great job. Octopods, I mean, both of them are going to be out of their element right now. But I think no, actually, there are enough numbers. There are enough numbers for Crown Aberrant that the octopods are going to be able to win out. But for cost, the octopods are actually winning. Like, heavy pods cost a fair bit more than octopods. Like, just to go over, heavy pods cost. Sippy Pods cost 110 and 58, while Octopods cost 70 44. So even losing those Octopods compared to the Seppies that he killed, definitely worth it. However, we didn't have Octopods to make that really pay off. More Seppy Pods coming up from Kaiden. He had, like I said, lost the Seppy Pods before. And Chrono is going to be getting very scary because Chrono was on the offensive with all the Chronoports. And he is Chronoporting very much. Chronoporting a great deal to try to take care of everything here. And it looks like Seppy Pods coming in for support. So. Kitan getting in more Seppipods for support, or had Seppipods here for support. Looks like the Seppies that were chronoported back here didn't ultimately get chronoported back, so... He is ultimately going to be able to get rid of these Seppipods. But we don't see the result of that quite yet. This green time of, I think, is going to be carrying it forward. And we'll see, it's just passing by now, and... Well, if it did, then it didn't work out quite as well for Kitan as I had anticipated. It's at the 1658 mark, so we're... Well ahead of where chronoporting started happening. 
And Farfly coming in here, trying to get rid of this, uh, the Akron, but doing no damage whatsoever. The Akron has too many, too many reefs around it. His only hope is to deal enough damage to both the resource processor and no. And even then, with the resource processor taking damage, that's not enough. So that Akron is way too protected by reefs to be damaged. While Chitin's Akron is actually quite vulnerable in in comparison. And here come the Farfly that came in before, trying to deal the damage they need to to that, but. The Sebipod is patrolling around from the looks of it, or if it isn't patrolling around, then it's still able to defend. Excuse me for a second. Hi. Sorry about that, I seem to be developing a cold. Very bizarre. I was feeling fine this morning, but it would seem that right now I am starting to develop a bit of a cold. So if I sneeze, I apologize for that, because... It's what happens when you have a cold. Anyway, Chitin getting more semi-pods in and will be able to deal a fair amount of damage with them. Because from the looks of it, Cronhammer doesn't have much in his base to defend. He has no domes, he has one semi-pod, and back in the Implodable Pass, he might have had a couple more semi-pods. But I don't know if he's going to be Chrono pointing back to deal with this. And semi however, are being built to deal with this. One of them going down, two of them going down before they're going to be born. One of them getting, two of them getting born, and... A third one coming up to get that should be able to get born in time, but even with that, Kitan is still dealing a, a large amount of damage to these Seppies. Hardly losing any Seppi pods in the process, despite the splash damage of the Seppies. But he does need to get out of there. He's losing them quickly, and he's losing them quickly enough. These Seppies are taking a lot of damage, but healing up even more from the reefs. So there really isn't enough going on to justify this. He's going to be losing these Seppi pods very quickly. Like I said, Sebi's have very good air splash damage, and yeah, he's losing the Sepi. He lost half his Sepi pod force, but managing to take out some Sepi's, not the best trade. Nowhere near the best trade. It's kind of funny. Farpod's actually there, would have helped out a lot. And Chrono boarded Sepi's as well, would finish off those Sepi pods, so Chitin, Chitin is really throwing away his units. And in the meantime, Chrono has been building up a lot of economy across the entire map. He's just been building everywhere. And now he's finally going for an assault. And let's see, he has tons of Seppies coming in for an assault. At least he's probably trying to set up for protecting against Seppi Paws. In case he's trying to defend against this. But the Guardian Akron still taking not enough damage to actually... Well, taking any meaningful damage. The Reefs are healing it enough. I'm a bit surprised... Hey, there we go. I was going to say, a bit surprised there are no Firepots coming up. And I was wrong. There are, in fact, Firepots coming up. Not sure if he's going to try to uppercut with those. But... He is building up Seppies. He does have... Those are the Seppies that he chronoports back later on. And that are right here in the force going towards the base. Seppipod trying to do what damage it can, but these Seppies probably won't even help too much. The only thing they could do is to damage a bunch of other things, causing the Reef's healing to get spread out. And Chronoport sending back Seppies. This is the Seppipod Assault we just saw recently. And going down for all the chronoported Seppies. So Chronoport ultimately being able to eliminate... All the Seppi Paws that Chitin had sent. Like I said, Chitin is wasting a lot of money on this. It's kind of hard to tell that you are, but... Of course, I mean, given the amount of Seppi Paws that Chronomarin can make, it's really hard for Chitin to actually have enough forces to deal with this. So Seppi Paws in this base, trying to take out the Arcticus. Not really able to do that, and... Once again, back to the Assault, and doesn't look like Chronomarin has changed too much. He might have added another Seppi to the Force. But he is... Well, Kitan is double-checking this salt. He's not really able to do anything about it. He does have a couple domes, though, being built up. Very very nice idea. And so these domes are in place. Getting to be able to get rid of a lot of the forces coming in to attack this. So Firepod's going to be able to do nothing, but one of the domes might go down. It's hard to tell. No, it will not go down. It will stay alive. The Reef will heal it up. And that will be quite good for Chitin. So Chitin's still able to defend his Akron just fine. But, like I said, Chronomer just needs to build... If Chronomer gets Lego class units, he gets Lego class, he gets a bunch more QPRPs, and just spams out far Legos and attacks from there, I think he'll be able to tear apart this Akron, because he has an economic advantage, and heck, even just spamming a bunch of Faro pods, or heck, Massive Octo Rush, that would be really neat to see. I don't think he'll do that. That's far... Massive Faro Rush might happen, but no, he is going for Lego class. He is ga grabbing that, gonna probably get... Actually, does he have any Sebi Pods around here? He doesn't appear to. 
Because something that a lot of players, I think Crown Armor especially, like to do is get Semipod, Pharopod, and then get Octoligos. Octoligos work wonderfully in this situation, by the way. They have excellent range, great damage, they'd be able to tear everything apart, no problem. But I don't see any Semipods coming up to help build that. I do see an Oct... or I do see Sebi's popping up, I don't see any Octopods either. So just the Pharopod, I'm curious as to what's going to happen with that, but... Looks like Chitin is expanding, or setting himself up as well. Crown is going to be well aware of this going on, by the way. His, he has this comm up here that you can see everything going on. And he is taking advantage of that knowledge, putting his Farpods in position to intercept. And getting a bunch of Sebis outside of the space. I think he's trying to stop any Sebipods from coming out, or Farpods or anything, from coming out along the direct path and dealing with anything he has in his main base while he expands out, gets a Lego class, and builds up. But he has Lego class, and he's not using it right now. I'm a bit surprised why. But anyway, all of his forces are in position, so he might be going out to attack right now. Or he might be waiting on that. Let's see, he's building up more Sepipods. So yes, he is likely to go for Octopods, getting the Sepipods. Once the Sepipods get into Chitin's base, they'll be able to progenerate with the Octopods into Octoligos. And the Octoligos will win the game for Cron Avern, unless Chitin has something that he can do from here, but I don't think he does. He has hardly any economy. He has this base down here, he has this, these RPs up here, and the RPs in the middle of the map. Trying to do some Q-Plasma conversion to get Sebi Pods, but these won't even help him. What he's going to need are probably Octopods. Like tons and tons of Octopods would be all he could really use. And tons and tons of Octos isn't a terrible idea either, though Octopods still would probably be what I'd go for. And Reeves coming up now. Crown Hammer setting up base. Getting... Here we go. Progenerating the Farpod, progenerating the Sebi Pod, and we'll be seeing Octoligos very shortly. Titan has one minute. He has one minute to turn this around. Because that's about the Octoligo build time combined with the far the progeneration time. If it is not turning this around within one and I mean by that I mean about 30 seconds actually, because of the fact that Crown Hammer could just chronoport back to the Octoligo. So if he can't turn this around within 30 real time seconds, 30 seconds as we reckon and not within the game, but 30 metaseconds. And he actually is able to do that for the looks of it. Nothing propagating forward of them being destroyed, so this Octo Rush actually managed to get rid of these forces here before they get Octo Octoligos. That actually worked. Titan's going to be able to tear to keep himself alive for at least a few minutes longer. Let's see, Crown further in the future, is he going to try to just go for this? No, he's going to go for an attack, but I don't think he's going to try to just go for progeneration. But he is going just straight up for an attack, and he I don't think he's going to try to actually build this up, though. Titan tearing apart the far pod and Semipod he had, but he still has... I thought he had Farapod around here, because I know he has a Semipod around here. He must have lost that second Farapod earlier on, but still very nice, very nice breaking out by Chitin with those Octos. Wonderful use of Octos. I... I did not expect that to happen, but that was awesome. So yeah, really nicely done. Chitin managing to defend against us, getting rid of these Reefs here, and Crown Armor still has an economic advantage, however, so as wonderful as a move as that was, it's still not enough to win, unfortunately. And actually, it looks like Chitin chronoporting back some forces to try to deal with these Octos, and successfully doing so as well. Or at least possibly. He's got himself in a paradox right now. The blue time will come along and change that. Trying to get rid of these domes before getting rid of the Akron, but I don't think he's going to be able to do that. I think he's going to lose these Seppies before that happens. The Seppies are not anti-ground units. And once this blue time comes along, he's going to be trying to chronoport back, however to help support this, but the blue time is coming along and it's breaking the chronoport. So this chronoport now didn't happen. And we'll see how this turns out with the Octos, but it looks like these Farpods are not being used for attacking, they're being used for something else, I suppose. But not for direct attacks. And Chitin, on the other hand, from his point of view, is tearing apart everything regardless. Maybe he built more Octos in the meantime, but... Yeah, he is tearing everything apart. From his point of view, however, this is... With the blue time of coming along, changing things around. Crown Abbott losing even that second Chrono Board, and the green time of coming along to remove that as well. So, no paradox really for Crown Abbott. He's just lost all those Chrono Boards that have happened. This assault has been soundly defeated. If there's nothing going on even further off the time waves that Crown Abbott can take advantage of, like Crown Abbott, even when he is, with what the red time of has propagated, doesn't have anything to attack with directly. So, this entire attack force got removed, and he still has legal class, though. He still has a massive economic advantage. An absolutely insane economic advantage. I don't know why he isn't taking advantage of that. Maybe chrono energy restrictions. 
but like jumping towards the present, building up a ton of units, building up some bot class units, and then from there building up legal class units, that would probably do it. But right now he does not have that available. And let's see, Kitan is going out for revenge assault, or at least getting rid of some of the economy that Crown Aberrant has. Still, Crown Aberrant has a ton of money in the bank, so at this point, what Crown Aberrant looks like he's just going to spam a bunch of Faros and then attack from there. Not a bad move given the amount of economy he has, but really, I still would go for the Octoligos. He was trying to, of course, but I would try again. And getting Octopods and Faropods, or Sepipods at least, he might be actually going for, Sepi, or for Faroligos instead. Not, instead of instead of the Octoligos, because the Octoligo rush, as we saw, was soundly defeated. And Chitin getting his own weaponry. Not sure he can support this, but he does have a lot of Q Plasma coming in, so he would at least be able to convert and then attack from there. Probably going to try to go Plasma Cruise Missile, like double Plasma Cruise Missile on the Akron, which if he times that right, could work out very beautifully. But right now, it's a terrible idea. The the bomb would go over these Faros, and the Faros and Sepipods going out for an attack Dome's protecting the Guardian, but or, the Akron, I should say, but nothing else. And Chrono Bomb coming in, Chrono Bombing everything away, everything but this Akron. Nice move, even better than Plasma Cruise Mitchell. Great Chrono Bomb, and it looks like this is going to be game. I think Chrono has lost this, getting this turnaround at the last second. But we'll see, Chrono might be Chrono Bombing back some stuff to try to deal with this. Or trying to deal with this in the Unplayable Past, or near the Unplayable Past. He still has his Arcticus in play, he still could get these units back here. And he's taking care of some of these Octos, but a lot of them coming in, and a Sepipod trying to come back and take care of Chitin's economy, but really what matters is trying to take care of Chitin's base here, but he has enough units to defend, even if Chronomer does Chronoport, Chitin is prepared at that time. And Chronomer is doing exactly that, Chronoporting back some of these units. But at this point, I'm not sure how he's going to be able to deal with this. I think he's lost. I think Chronomer has completely lost this. We'll find out shortly, though. Like I said, there's the Chrono Bomb, but he is trying to defend, getting as far as in a position that should do it. Even with the Chrono Bomb, these Faros are not going down fast enough. The Autos are not taking care of them. So these Faros able to defend successfully, but Autos flanking, however, coming in around the back to flank. Poor timing on that flank, though, unfortunately. Taking a bit too long to come around and actually deal with these Faros, so the Faros will stay alive long enough. And that will be... That was a good effort, though, by Kitan's part. I think he, he still has a chance, though. He's still putting himself back into the game. But at the same time... Well, not at the same time, actually. This is further in the future. Crown Amber is trying to attack Kitan. I guess trying to get rid of his Akron really far in the future. Not that it matters. That's Faulty and Playable Past Edge. But he lost some of the Faros that he had used, but he still had plenty. And Crown Amber, with a massive economic advantage, still has plenty of forces he can use. But it looks like that applies... No, it's another Chrono Bomb coming in. Not close enough to the Faros, however, so not able to actually take care of them. But a second Chrono Bomb, if it fired off right here, would be perfect. But I don't think Chrono Aberrant... Or I don't think... Yeah, Chrono has to worry about that. That's the unplayable past. The Akron is still mostly undefended, but... No forces coming in. All the forces that Chitin had built up are dead. Completely destroyed. And the Akron moving out of the base completely. So it's no longer an obvious target. Chitin is setting himself up here. Where is he setting himself up? He has one Sepipod coming in here. And now, Crown Aberrant's base is coming back up, and Crown Aberrant, I don't think he's going to move his Akron back into the base, just to make it a trap. No, he is moving it back in, so he can heal up. So I was, I was wondering if he's going to make that more of a trap for Chitin, but apparently not. Apparently he wants to have it stay in the protection of the reefs. And then, once that happens, then it'll be very difficult for Chitin to deal with that. But Chitin still has weapons, he still has Chrono Porting, he still has Chrono Bomb potential. He has Plasma Cruise Missile potential as well, but I don't think he's going to go for that. It's far too expensive for what he needs. And the Chrono Bombs have, been compl have completely stopped having any effect. So, both players once again simplifying down, but... Chrono Bomb just double-checking this. I don't think he's Chrono Pointing back to actually deal with that at all. But, hey, there is a Plasma Cruise Missile. So, a Plasma Cruise Missile is coming up. Not a bad timing for it either, and... Kai coming in, and... Obliterating most of the base inside here. Where is the Akron? The Akron has taken some damage, but not a whole lot. Sepipod coming in from the south to deal with that. But not much else is going to be able to deal with it. And it looks like Crown Aberrant, another Plasma Cruise Missile will come up and deal a ton of damage once that does. 
Unless it's the same. No, I think that's the same plasma cruise missile. That was just one. But if another plasma cruise missile comes up, that will deal enough damage that we'll, we should be able to just take care of everything. And there's that chrono bomb that I fired off earlier. By the way, Acrons cannot be chrono bombed or chrono ported. They they are completely immune to that stuff. But at this point, I don't know if it matters. Kaiden is able to deal enough damage. That Acron is going down. Chrono Aberrant will soon be losing that Acron, or almost would have been losing it. This Saving Pond not in a proper position to actually deal with that. Not sure what's going on there. Why is that not getting hit? So Chrono Aberrant, I don't know if he didn't get hit with the Plasma Cruise Missile or what, but it looks like there is no Plasma Cruise Missile coming up anymore. I'm, did Chrono Aberrant lose? Oh, I see, that's what happened. Chrono Aberrant successfully undermined Titan's economy, so Titan never actually transferred all that Q plasma into liquid crystal, so Titan's gonna need to build more RPs if he wants to fire off more plasma cruise missiles, but at this point, this Akron has not actually taken all that much damage compared, uh, apart from what the Sentinel have dealt, which is actually a fair amount. But at this point, the Reefs are healing it too quickly, so once again, no real damage being dealt. Chrono Aberrant, however, still not taking advantage of his economic advantage. He really just needs to spam out units. I'm very surprised he hasn't been doing that. But he needs to do that, and he's not. And I'm a bit surprised why. It's... I guess he just hasn't really noticed that. Maybe he's confused how to handle that. I don't know. But... Defeated that... Oh, Chronomant... Actually, yeah, Chronomant has actually defeated... Wow, okay. So yeah, Chronomant has actually lost that here. Hey, where we are, his Akron is completely dead. Though not where he is. He is not in a point in time where his Akron is dead. He is still one of the Akron alive points. But his Akron is dead further in the future, and it looks like... Well, obviously he can't command anything from that point. So from here, it's going to be just... Both players trying to finish each other off. I don't know if... I think they've... Most of the resources on the map have been exhausted. A lot of them have been exhausted. Going back to the 3150 mark near the unplayable past edge, the Akron is not dead, nowhere near dead, but Kitan finally got his Plasma Crystal going in the unplayable past and should be able to from there. I think he got two going actually. Yeah, there's one, and there's another construction order here, so it looks like the second Plasma Crystal Missile. That should do it. And it should be able to take care of everything that. Crown Armor has in his base in the Impeble Past. And I guess I'm a bit surprised Crown Armor has... He really could have just been spamming out so many units. I'm really surprised that he didn't. He's not producing as much as he could have. And it would have won in the game. We're getting tech up and just firing off loot cruise missiles as if there was no tomorrow. And yeah, Crown Armor has surrendered. So that is... Wow, that was an extremely long game. But interesting. So I hope you enjoyed that. And... Be back shortly with another game, so stay tuned.